101.9 Kink.fm, coming to you from the Bing Lounge. Happy birthday to the Bing. We're here with uh, Grammy Award-winning artist Esperanza Spaulding. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's so good to see you again, Esperanza. And you have a, a little gold in your home since we last talked, a little something called the Grammy Award. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm, I'm curious what the single best result of winning the Grammy has been. Hmm. Um, well, uh, this spotlight started shining on me, and uh, since you know I don't exist alone, I'm not a floating free agent, all these people and forces and music and bands and influences that I'm connected with, at least the edges of them are getting illuminated too. So um, I guess the, the value in winning the Grammy so far has been bringing some of that spotlight around. So like being in Portland now, that spotlight has attracted you here, but also um, people to these benefit concerts this week. So the spotlight will hopefully also illuminate um, really important programming and educational needs that may not have been getting the light they deserved. So for whatever it's worth, uh, I will do my best to carry that little light around as much as I can for <laughs> as long as I have it. So. It's not, yeah, it's fantastic. It's not such a little light anymore when the gorgeous Esperanza Spaulding is on the cover of the New York Times magazine as the you know hit of the moment. And um, I was so struck in your Grammy Acceptance Award that you actually took the time to thank your Portland teachers. Not many people reached back that far into their musical careers to say, you deserve my thanks in this moment. Well, maybe that, I guess the point is that's not that far back. And I don't, I don't mean, I don't mean that I'm that young. I am young, but they're still with me. You know, it's not like uh, any any crop, any plant needs cultivation and care. You know, as long as it's going to bear fruit. And um, I didn't just know those people when I was a little kid. You know, I'm still in touch with my peers and my colleagues and my teachers in this city and everyone that I've met along the way that has helped me. Um, they're a part of my extended family and the community of musicians, so they were in the front of my mind, you know. Uh, I'm grateful <laughs> that they're still here and that I get to um, draw nourishment from what they know. Mm. Keep the uh, keep the accolades going. Grammy, yes, but uh, you're also going to be inducted on October 8th into the Oregon Music Hall of Fame as the Oregon Artist of the Year 2011. Congratulations. You must be... Uh, you must be getting used to making acceptance speeches. <laughs> Shoot, yeah, as long as I'm responsible. Yeah, sometimes people give me uh, notoriety where I haven't done anything yet. It's just like a publicity op. So I'm happy to talk about accepting something that I feel will be good for more than just me, you know? Um, and I really thought that the Grammy was good for more than just me. You know, I didn't do anything particularly unique in the world. So it's not like I deserved it, but since someone was going to hand it to me, and the point was there are people within the music community that felt grateful that someone like me could make it to that point. So really, it was like accepting this on behalf of all the other people that make that music possible. Um, and just like the Oregon Hall of Fame, I mean, that's not me, per se. I mean, I exist coming from Oregon because of all the people that maybe are not inducted in the Hall of Fame yet, and they certainly should be, you know what I mean? I certainly do. Let's talk a little bit about the American Music Project. Uh, they're the uh, reason you're playing tonight at the Girding Theater. It's a benefit concert. And uh, talk a little bit about your thoughts uh, keeping music alive in the schools. How important is that? It's the most important. Um, children need to know that they're cared for and they need to know that they have the capacity to do great things. And if you, if children have to wait until they're adults and um, can go out and make something happen with money or influence, it's too late. So for young children to be involved in the community and be developing their creative minds, developing their linguistic minds, their mind for mathematics, all of these aspects of the human brain that are developed when people study music from the time that they're little. And at any age, being part of an extended musical community that holds you responsible and accountable for your actions 
and your ability to stay diligent and follow through on projects on behalf of something greater than you, at any stage in a child's development, that's crucial to becoming um, good members of society, responsible members of society on the grand scheme or just in a family or in a community. So I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I think it's the most important thing. And the fact that Dr. Thera Memory and all the people involved with the organization have given all their time and energy and love to create a program like that um, is worth coming to town for. <laughs> so uh, I will continue to do it, too. As just one final moment, would you share with our audience the, the moment as a kid that you fell in love with the bass? Oh, yeah. Well, um, my, my sort of high school at the time had one, and I don't know why, but I went and I picked it up, and um, the resonance was attractive, really. That's not very romantic, but the resonance was attractive. Um, and I didn't understand anything about the function or what improvisational music was or anything like that. But um, when a teacher came in and sort of explained what I would do as a bass player in a blues, on the chord changes on a blues, something about that, I don't know. I couldn't understand it intellectually, but intuitively it gripped me. Um, and then I got to go study with Thera and with all the teachers of the Mel Brown camp um, and people around town. Um, I think the people I'm thinking of are Dave Captine and Andre St. James, Dan Schulte. They gave me these great lessons and uh, got me going, at least to the point that I could leave town and kind of start to play. So um, that's the not very romantic, but certainly important story. <laughs> Good story. Well, you are such a great energy and you're really representing Portland and Oregon in such a, uh, a fine style nationally. We thank you. It's so fun watching your journey. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, just a couple years ago, you were in the old live performance lounge, I think playing for three or four people during lunch. And <laughs> a few things have changed and you deserve every bit of the, uh, the accolades you. and success. So thank you again for helping us celebrate one year in the Bing Lounge. Happy birthday. Tonight at the Girding Theater and the benefit concert for the American Music Program, let's hear it one more time for Grammy Award-winning artist Esperanza Spalding. Thank you.